Hello everyone, it's Jen here again from After School Art Club. Are you okay? Thumbs up? Surviving? Mum and Dad's doing alright? Good week? Good week at school, good week at home, good week homeschooling, hope it's all going well. So today, um, all you will need is a piece of paper and a pencil because we're going to be looking at still life. And um, if you've got colouring pens or pencils or possibly paints, you can add that to your picture when you've finished. So uh, we're also going to think about objects that we're going to set up when we create a still life scene. So at some point in the video, you can uh, stop watching, go and collect some bits, set up a little arrangement, and then we'll come back and we'll learn how to draw them. But let me tell you about still life. Does anybody know what still life is? I've kind of given it away a little bit. Uh, when talking about what we're doing today. So as normal in after school art club, I've got my boards that I'll show the kids. So this, hopefully you can see, the sun is glaring today in my little art shed. So hopefully you can see that. Okay, so still life is basically an arrangement um, of stuff that an artist wants to draw. So an artist would set up um, on a table, um, possibly um, different types of objects that they want to draw from around the house which is what we're going to do today we're going to get things from around the house they're typically um, object ideas for gathering and then drawing could be some food could be some tools could be some toys uh, maybe some plants um, and maybe some jars and containers now there are three important things to think about when drawing still life so um, the objects uh, that are closer to you in your picture are often lower down um, on the paper. So that'll all make sense in a minute when I go through my picture. Um, also, objects that are closer to you, so if you set up an arrangement, um, the objects that are closer to you are often in front of the objects that are further away, that are behind. Um, also, um, when we're thinking about setting up oh, a still life, we're thinking about proportion, which means the sizes of objects. So here you can see, because um, artists decide, some of you might know this, to draw um, a portrait picture. Um, portrait not only means when you're drawing a portrait of a person and a portrait of a head, um, that kind of goes together with if people are drawing portrait pictures of people's faces, a piece of paper goes this way up which means it's portrait, so it's long way up. Um, if, a, if you turn the piece of paper to the side, this is what's known as landscape, because often you see paintings of landscapes, of scenery, um, and the paintings are kind of longer. So if they're taller and go up, then it's uh, more of, uh, it's described as portrait, so face that way, and if it's landscape, then it's that way. So um, here are some examples of um, different techniques you can think about when you are drawing um, and colouring in an object, um, especially when we're setting up um, some still life. So this is uh, the outline, hopefully, you can, oh, you can see that now. This is the outline of my apple. So I've literally just drawn the outline with my pencil. This is what's known as cross hatching. Hopefully you can see that. So it's where I've literally done crossing over of my pencil marks to create um, kind of a crossing over effect. That's known as cross hatching. Um, shading is when you press really hard on your pencil, one side of the object, and then to the other side you kind of go lighter, so you're doing different types of shade. So if you think of kind of shadows, when the sun's shining and you see a shadow on something on the table, you're kind of trying to draw that and replicate that often in a picture so I would press really hard on one side and then slowly slowly I'd lift my pencil off to get lighter so it's lighter on this side so you can you can experiment and have fun with that and um, by pressing hard and soft with your pencil um, here I've just drawn the very same apple but I've done some cross hatching and I've done it in pen so I've got a biro pen um, and I've done it quite loosely and quite kind of scribbly but I think that looks quite effective and then here I have used um, some pastels give the different colours of my apple. When you look at an object quite closely, if you're thinking about drawing it, suddenly lots of different colours come to life. You know, we often think of like a red apple or a green apple. Well, within that, 
um, there will be different tones of red or green and that's what artists try to put together when they're doing a still life picture um, and here I just did a watercolour um, example of the very same apple so with my pencils again I was thinking of the dark reds and the light reds and then um, with my watercolours I hopefully made that come to life so we are thinking about an artist called Cezanne this is called Paul Cezanne is that nice? Again, I need a lovely French accent to make that sound a bit better. He was um, a famous French artist and post-impressionist. Um, and he, um, his paintings, he drew a lot of still life and he's quite famous for his still life and his still life scenes. Um, and his paintings were often thought of, thought of as abstract um, and symbolic. So this is a really uh, a famous picture, one of his many famous pictures, he's a very good artist, um, of still life with apples and oranges. So what artists um, used to do, this is a picture of him here, and here's some other examples of his work. There's he, there was a lot of fruit. Um, um, people way back when used to draw um, still life. Uh, fruit and fabric used to be quite important when setting up because they're looking at how the light shines on the object and the different colours that it creates and then the uh, fabrics or the tablecloth that they often put their um, still life arrangements on um, they brought out the shadows and the shadings and the um, kind of texture they wanted to kind of um, layer up the texture as well with whatever the still life was sat on or was possibly at the back or what was behind the still life so often um, you'll see a table um, set up like this, that was a fruit bowl, and then sometimes you'll see a window in the background so that they're trying to um, think about composition. And now um, composition is something we think about when we are drawing still life, and this is to do with how we kind of arrange our picture. So how we arrange our, um, our objects that we want to draw we think about going from kind of a taller shape to a smaller shape and thinking about the spaces in between and the colours that we're arranging. So basically, as I've said, still life is an arrangement of objects on a table for an artist to draw. So normally in Art School Art Club, what I would do is we would go through, here's a little still life setup that I did, and it's just to explain, because um, sometimes it can be quite daunting when you're thinking about drawing what's in front of you. So here's an example of what I drew. So I um, got a banana, I think that is an apple, an orange and some grapes. So when you're thinking about drawing still life, again you're thinking about shapes and I've said this so many times when you're thinking about drawing, if you think oh, I can't really draw a banana or I'm not very good at drawing grapes, so you break it down into the shapes that you're looking at. So I very roughly drew, I put my um, objects on my table, here they do look as if they're floating in midair, and we'll get to that in a minute. So I drew roughly the round shape for the orange and the apple and the grapes with the stalk. And then my kind of second thing I'm then thinking about, once I've positioned everything, is once you draw a line on your piece of paper where your objects are, it then makes you uh, believe and think that what you're drawing is on a table. So at the moment, if you see that, that they're just floating in midair. But as soon as I put a line across, you can tell that they're obviously sat on something. So this is obviously what they're sat on, and this is obviously the background. So once I've drawn my shapes, I'm confident and happy. And you can always, sometimes when you're sketching out shapes, um, you've got to give it a go a couple of times, because maybe you're not happy with how you did it. And so if you press lightly, then you can rub it out um, and try again. So then once you're happy with where everything is positioned, then you can press harder um, over your um, pencil lines to give it more of a uh, defined shape. And then when you are really happy, so here I've tried to do a bit of cross hatching. So I've looked at my, um, often when you look at an object, you can see it's lighter one side and darker the other side. And that's all to do with like the angle of the light that's hitting it. So I'm using kind of my shading, so obviously here it's darker on that side and here it's darker on that side and then that starts, what happens when you start to press hard, hopefully you can see that, is it starts to give the objects that you're drawing depth. So we're going to look a little bit, I'm going to show you examples of um, 
often when we're drawing things we just draw them kind of all in a line so thinking about still life and thinking about perspective which means uh, kind of what object we're looking at first what's kind of in the middle what's at the back um, and how it draws your eyes in so um, we this can you can have a practice of this this I mean I I have been doing art for years so I this um, you know I did do this a few times to get the positions right but then once I was happy with it I knew how I was going to draw and how I was going to shade things and often a little tip is when something is behind something see how this apple is behind the banana well on the edge of the banana where it leads into the apple I've made that bit darker because that pushes the object in front forward or it gives you the um, again the perspective and the feeling that that banana is in front of that because you kind of want to replicate what you see still life is all about drawing um, exactly what you're looking at and you're trying to make that it's not like taking a photo uh, well it's like taking a photo but it's like taking a photo um, by capturing it in a drawing sense so you're trying to kind of trick the view and trick the eye by including things to give them depth and you do that by the shading so in our club I would then give everybody a piece of paper um, and each table would have a still life setup so if you wanted to go and get say you can just see here this is what i would normally set up at art club and i'm going to roughly show you how i do it now um, if you get about five objects of different sizes different colors and different shapes so you could stop the video now now and go and get those objects um we can then come back and i will show you what we do in art club and how i try to get the kids how i try to get you guys to look at um, kind of layering up the images and the tricks you can do to create a still life scene. So, it's a bit wobbly because I've stuck mine down. So I went and got these objects. So on the table in art club, I'd set these up and the kids would sit around them and we would think about drawing each of these objects as we could see them. So how I've done this, so when we're thinking about composition and composition is how you set it up and basically where you place your objects. So I would always kind of go with the tallest object at the back. So that can be at the middle or you can move it to the side and then you're kind of going down in height. Um, just because uh, when you're looking at pictures, how things are placed, your eye follows the kind of eye line and the height line of where um, objects are on a picture. So I've put my brick here and I did that because I've put it so that I'm going to have to think about angles when I'm drawing this. And then I did my orange to the side and then my apple right at the front. So if you were to put this on uh, or set your still life up, I'd maybe go with um, a plain um, base. And you could you could put something at the back if you wanted to you know, not see the background, if you were just concentrating on it. Or if you were quite confident, you could totally drape a curtain over the back and some tablecloth and... You can make a lovely picture if you were um, feeling confident in adding lots of other aspects to your picture. So I'm going to show you how we would think about drawing that still life. And you can use any objects you like. So what I noticed in Art Club was, here's my lovely whiteboard again, if I was to draw this, so lots of children, we naturally, so if this is my bottle and I will do this kind of quite sketchy, whoops, that one's not gone too well. Right, so if that was my bottle, and then I would put the tube here, like that, and then I would draw the apple here, and then I would draw the teddy here. So what I found was, and you learn this, uh, the more you practice and the more you do. So here is my teddy. And then we'll do the orange here. So that is a still life picture, but we can make it better than this because if we really look at the picture, we can see how I've drawn it first time round is everything in on this kind of same level. So you're just drawing the objects almost on the same line. So the, a good way to think about drawing your still life setup is to think about what's in front of what when you're looking at your pictures and you can do this by rubbing out if you used a pencil so again if i did this again i would know 
my bottle and I'll try and draw the bottle a bit better this time. The bottle I'll draw at the back. So the bottle is the tallest and it's at the back. So if I'm looking at my picture, so the bottle is there. And then if I'm looking at that, I mean, you might be able to see, you might not be able to see, the teddy bear, the care bear, his arm overlaps the bottom of the bear. And if you're thinking about height as well, so think, we know that's the biggest um, item that I've got that I'm drawing. So if I look at the teddy, the teddy's head kind of sits about there. So if I drew the teddy again, if we drew the teddy again, I know his head is there, should be over a little bit actually but if he was closer I can show you about overlapping so his cheeks are there so his arm kind of goes down near there so then I would rub those bits out and this will give me the perspective so this will show me what's in front of what so if that's my teddy his arm his body or this isn't one of my best teddies I have to say his feet are here. So he is, I might make that, so how I'm looking at, so if I also look, the base of my bottle is kind of at the bum of my teddy, so I'm going to make that one a bit smaller. And I've rubbed that out, so now we can see this is really detail of my little teddy here. So now we can hopefully see, hopefully I'm giving you an idea of how to do this with his little heart nose. doesn't it? It's led to it to be better. Now the thing is, if I'm looking at my cube, so rather than it being flat, I've set it at an angle and I know it's at the base of the... So I've done it a bit like this. So, if I draw, if I kind of come forward a little bit, I'm going to draw that down a little bit like that. So, to make things look, um, it's all to do with 3D drawing and it, you might have done this at school already when you're looking at 3D um, cubes and stuff. So I'm looking at the angles and the direction in which something goes. So you see how this point makes me feel that that is closer to me than that. So I've drawn my lines at an angle and then I follow. So these lines all going to this side are all the same angle so that they're all pointing the same way. And then these lines that are going down are also um, pointing the same way as well. And to make something seem as if it's closer to you, you'd make this line the longest. So the point here is longer than that line and that line and that. So that's roughly my cube. I'm going to draw some detail of my bottle here. So you would add in your detail when you're drawing your still line. And then my orange, so I know when I'm looking my apple, I hope you can see that, is the uh, object closest to me. So I would draw that um, closest or to the edge of the paper. So that, everything of mine needs to be moved up, but I'll, I'll do this pretty quick for you. My orange is sat on its own, kind of there. So I'll do my orange on his own there, like that. Oh, I haven't done my brown turret. Or the top of my little clay, that's a little clay, little brown clay. Yeah. You see how I'm rubbing out those bits there? That's not great, but hopefully you get the gist. And then my apple is at the front. Sometimes things can go over the edge and then I'm going to draw if I do that then look it's all sitting down so kind of kind of all right it's all right isn't it so that's a quick um my teddy bear could be better his legs could be better but um that's kind of uh when you're drawing you're thinking about the perspective and you're thinking about things being in front of um each other if you think about the first drawing that I did everything was kind of in a line but with this drawing what I'm actually looking at is where 
my eye when I'm looking at still life, so when you're setting up something, you're looking at almost the measurements of where something is positioned. So I was thinking, right, how tall is that in relation to the top of that? So that's about that tall. If I'm looking at my still life picture, and that's about that tall. And then they're in line with the arm. And now, like I said, the bottom was kind of in line with the bum. Now I just know where to start and finish my marks. And then you can just rub out bits. So again, it gives you, um, well, it gives you hopefully a kind of picture that looks like what you're looking at. So that is something that you can get on with, and it might take you a while, and it takes practice. And um, just don't get upset, don't get worried. I mean, I know that that leg could be a bit better, but I'm quite happy with that shape. Um, so it just takes practice and time to keep. Um, to keep looking up, so keep looking up. And often you'll see professional artists, when they're looking at something, they will measure um, with their pen. So if they're looking at still life, they'll almost use their pen like a ruler and they'll hold their hand out. And so they will look and they will think, right, okay, so that's about that big when I'm looking at my object. So then they bring it back to their piece of paper and they think, right, well, I've measured, it's about that big, so then it's about that big on the paper. So it's all about just perspective and measuring and thinking about positions and where everything is. So enjoy and um, yeah, maybe take some pictures or, you know, take get my reason daddy to show me some pictures of what still life you've been looking at this week and what pictures you've done. So I'm going to show you something that I did um, when I was 17, which was a very long, very, very long time ago because I'm 42 now. This is a picture of a still life um, painting that I did when I was studying my exam. So when I was at school and I was inspired by Suzanne, just woo, it's quite wobbly, uh, the artist that we've just been looking at. And this was a setup um, that uh, we had at school. And I think I did this, one of my exam pieces. And so you can see, we were looking at the traditional um, um, styles of still life, which is obviously using pots and pans and fruit and jugs. And here I've used um, my kind of style of painting. It's a bit like um, Suzanne in the, in the way that I've just layered the colours together. So even though you can tell exactly what those objects are, my style of painting is quite, um, I use lots of brush strokes together. So I don't do one flat colour. I try to use different colours to create um, like the volume and the, um, so like here, I've created, I've done white on this parsnip, I think, to think about the highlights. So do you remember we were saying about where the light hits an object and that would be your highlight. So I've, here I've created, so this is light here and then behind it is a darker colour to push this object forward. And what we learnt about at school was also, oh, um, the perspective of something. So how I've angled my positions of my fruit um, is to make you think, obviously I've drawn a table and I did a background here, to make you think that this uh, pastiff is kind of coming out um, of the composition and this knife I've um, put as if it was cutting through the onion and how I've drawn it, it's, it's supposed to make you think that that's coming off of the table. And in my um, picture I've also as well as creating, you know, like we were saying about the line, so there's something you can see sits on something, I've created a line at the front. So I've my fabric is all curved all around all these shapes, and then I've made it drop off the table. So it gives you a baseline to understand what you're looking at, which is that there is uh, a load of objects sat on a cloth, sat on a table. So that's just to show you something uh, that's many years of doing lots of art. And I think that took me a very long time to finish. And that's something you might do if you did art at school um, when you get um, older and bigger um, and just uh, exciting big pictures that you could do. Now, another task that you could do, I know I've waffled on for quite a while about still life, but still life, there's lots to talk about with still life. Um, once you've done that, and I hope you enjoy doing that, uh, another task you could do is looking at the same setup that you've done, you could challenge yourself to draw it in different ways. So then I was just drawing it with pen and pencil and um, colouring it or painting it however you like. So this is whoa, something that I did do and I do um, leave out for the kids on the table. 
is this was my still life um, originally see my teddy bear is much better than that one because I took a longer time to do it so this is my pencil setter and then then I challenge the kids and I challenge you to draw the same thing that you're looking at but how about don't draw it all um, see uh, pick out maybe a, um, a part of your picture and draw it again but drawing using a different type of medium which means a different type of piece of equipment so I've drawn uh, this in pen and then here I've done the same thing but I've drawn something even closer and only picked two objects and I've drawn it in felt pen. So they're just uh, three other ideas that you could do whilst looking at your still life. Hopefully, I haven't gone on too long. Hopefully that will give you an hour or less or more to do some art. Hopefully that'll give mums and dads a little bit of time to have a coffee, send the email. I know I say that, I'm gonna still keep saying it. Um, have a lovely week, enjoy doing uh, your still life um, lesson. And I'm thinking we might do either a bit of sculpture, which would just be um, any recycled boxes or toilet roll holders that you have. We might do sculpture next week or maybe collage, which would be paper. So I'm trying to do these lessons so it's, you've got the equipment at home. OK, have a good week. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.